G'day guys, um, today we're going to go through making one of these um, big bulbs. Of them. <clears throat> wow, isn't she nice? So what we want to do is uh, make the bar so that the um, that the pleats along here aren't lost um, and that uh, the bow has, has a nice form and also that none of the contents are lost rupture through the bow. Anyway, uh, let's take this bow out and see what's inside. <clears throat> okay, let's um, break open the bow. Just open up the bow and uh, here we've got um, boiled egg, we've got minced pork, we've got um, some, ch I think that's um, char seal. Was that, one there? that one is that one is char seal. Hard to tell in this lighting. Uh, and just on the side there is uh, Chinese sausage or lapcho. Anyway, uh, let's try and see what it tastes like. It's quite moist, and there's um, fat which has actually gone into the dough. Okay, let's have a taste. This is really, really nice bow. You can taste the fat. Dough is all fluffy. You can taste the different flavours. So down here is some water chestnuts. You can taste the crunchiness as you eat it. All the different flavours. So that's Lachon, Lachon flavour here. What happened to my egg though? Bit of Lachon, pork mince, egg seems to have gone. Must have swallowed it. See how fluffy the dough is. This is really a good winter's meal. Mm. Really good. Okay, so let's get started on making the wrapper. We're going to use uh, two cups of standard grade flour. Now this flour is 11% um, um, protein. So we want to um, reduce that a bit because normal Chinese flour is about 8 or 9% protein. So we're going to dilute that down with a bit of um, wheat starch. So wheat starch is used as the thickener, it has no protein. So I use um, two cups of um, standard grade flour, 11% and put an extra cup of um, wheat starch that will bring the protein content down to about um, 8 percent and it will make it a bit fluffier and lighter but because it's got less gluten a little bit weaker as well and I'm going to use um, one teaspoon of ordinary um, salt I'm going to sieve that together now so I've got my uh, flour in there one teaspoon of salt And now I'm going to um, get the wheat starch ready. Just need a little bit more. Dump that in. <clears throat> and by sieving it, you give it a good mix. And of course, there's flour going everywhere into the air. Okay. For the yeast, I'm going to use an instant dry yeast. Now, you don't actually have to uh, bloom this, but 
sometimes it's easier to do these things and uh, this is one packet which contains eight grams or two teaspoons <coughs> so I'm going to add that to some warm milk uh, and in the milk I'm going to have some sugar I'm just going to use uh, ordinary um, whole milk um, this recipe doesn't use any fat and um, I'm going to use the fat inside the um, the milk instead so the issue with fat is that when you want to um, hydrate the flour you have to mix it really well um, with the water so that all the flour gets hydrated but if you add fat that can cover the flour and stop the flour from being hydrated so it's best to actually hydrate the flour first before you add the fat um, adding the fat um, strengthens the um, gluten network and stops all the um, extra flavors from escaping into the air as gases but for this purpose um, we're going to um, just add the fat as milk fat full milk um, into the um, dough so let me get one and a quarter cups of um, warm milk first gonna put that in this um, bowl here and we're just going to heat it up in the microwave this recipe only uses uh, two tablespoons of uh, sugar so I'm just using whatever I've got brown sugar here it is now I'm going to dissolve that and I heat it up in the microwave for about 30 seconds so I've heated up the milk a little bit you don't really want the milk too hot because when you're making dough they say that it's uh, you should use warm um, water or milk in winter and uh, cold water and milk in summer but if you're hand kneading it uh, then you should use cold milk because the heat from your hands actually heats up the, um, the dough so we're going to let this go cold because it is going to be hand kneaded rather than using the um, stand mixer okay most of that sugar is dissolved and now I'm going to add it's actually just warm and exceedingly sweet I'm just going to add my uh, 8 grams or 2 teaspoons of yeast So this is going to apply whether or not you use an instant yeast or a dry yeast because we're actually going to bloom it. Normally instant yeast you can just chuck it into the flour. <clears throat> and I'm going to come back in 10 minutes and hopefully that will all have bloomed. <clears throat> Alexa, set a yeast timer for 10 minutes. Now. Well, it's not 10 minutes yet, but uh, you can see the dough starting, the uh, yeast starting to dehydrate and bloom. We're at 10 minutes, <coughs> and uh, the, the yeast hasn't started to bloom yet, so we're going to wait another 10 minutes. We're not going to go ahead with this until we're sure that the yeast is active. It's nearly 20 minutes and it hasn't finished um, fully blooming yet. So I think I'm going to wait another 10 minutes to make it 30 minutes in total. Actually, it just changed at um, 20 minutes. So let's have a look. So the yeast is all pretty well all foaming up. So I'm going to consider this is as good. And now I'm going to mix it in to the um, flour. Just formed a little well for the yeast water, and I'm just going to add it in straight in. And then I'm just going to use some chopsticks to mix it in. 
in a circular motion because I want to get the uh, dough as hydrated as possible and I don't really want to get my hands dirty so I'm going to get as much of the dry stuff hydrated as possible so that when I use my hands to knead it it's not going to get all sticky on me so let's get all this dry material hydrated want to get these little uh, bits of dough forming I can see that there's moist areas at the bottom I want to mix this up now oh, let's get this out <coughs> Collect as much as the dough on the sides as much as possible. Little bit of dough there. Let's get this up. Pick this up. Okay. So now I want to form this into a ball. So I better just squash my hands first. <clears throat> okay, and all I want to do is get this into a round ball. <clears throat> it's not too bad, it's not sticking too much to my hands anymore. Pick up all the bits of flour on the edges. Hands did get a bit sticky after all. And I'm just going to let that sit, rest for about 10 minutes. Just going to make it easier for me to roll it out. <clears throat> this one it is. Okay, I'm going to leave that for 10 minutes. Alexa, set a resting timer for 10 minutes. Resting timer, 10 minutes, starting now. Well, our 10 minutes are up, so we stop resting it and we can start kneading this. It's a bit wet, so I think I'm going to have to add a little bit of flour to it. It's not too bad once I put a little bit of flour on it. Oops. Anyway, let's get rid of that. <coughs> Actually, it's very soft now. <coughs> so you're supposed to knead it for about 10 minutes. And it helps form the gluten network as well as properly hydrates the, uh, the flour. Alexa, set a knead timer for 10 minutes. <clears throat> knead timer, 10 minutes, starting now.
So I'm just going to form a little dough ball. Somehow. And I'm going to let it first proof for one hour. So I want this to rise to twice the size. So that is going to be from there to there. So about that about that height here. Anyway, I'll leave it for an hour and come back and then punch it down. Currently uh, my room temperature is only uh, 19 degrees um, Celsius. <coughs> so that means it's going to take a bit longer than if it were at 23 or 21 degrees Celsius. Might take two hours. So that's going to give me time to start preparing the filling. Alexa, cancel. So here's my filling I'm going to start with. I've got about 350 grams of... Um, I think it's pork butt. So, yep. I'm going to start and mince that up. Better hold my gut by him first. <clears throat> I think I'll roll my sleeves up for this. <clears throat> I have a food processor, but the trouble with food processors is that they tend to chop up the meat too finely and it affects the texture. Now the filling also uses uh, four forest mushrooms or shiitake mushrooms. Um, best to choose four mushrooms of the same size approximately. And uh, we're going to cut those in half and destem them. Also it's got um, 100 grams of um, water chestnuts to give that a little bit of crunchy texture to it. So I need to weigh out 100 grams of water chestnuts and cut them up. And uh, have the... Uh, shiitakes. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 water chestnuts equals 100 grams. Chop those up now. <clears throat> Any way you like. The thing is that this is going to go into the mixer, so it's going to be uh, uh, reduced in size anyway. <clears throat> Mushrooms, take the... I don't know what happened here, but it's got two stems. That's very odd. I only want the hard bits inside the um, bun. <coughs> Normally I take these stems off and use them uh, for soup, but I forgot to do it this time. 
<coughs> so that's going to go into my mixer. I've got the uh, chopped mince, which uh, yeah, I ran out of space, so I couldn't show you that. <coughs> Mushrooms, <coughs> water chestnuts. <coughs> so next ingredients are a tablespoon of um, oyster sauce. A teaspoon <clears throat> a teaspoon of uh, chicken essence or um, chicken bouillon powder so I'll put that in now one teaspoon of that one teaspoon of salt Two teaspoons of uh, sugar. And then look at my uh, sesame, uh, not my ses sesame oil goes last. So I've got the uh, oyster saucer now. Come on. Oops, there it is. There's always that initial hard to get out of the bottle. <coughs> Come on, use that mushroom to wipe it clean. Okay. Now to stick it into the uh, mixer, use the K-beater until it's a nice um, sticky mixture. Actually, do we need a bit of um, pepper as well? Uh, maybe a lot of pepper. Okay, up to the K-mixer. Well, this is a pretty old Kenwood mixer. So I want this fairly sticky. <clears throat> this is only after a minute and you can see that the meat is still fairly solid so we've got a long way yet to go <clears throat> so this is almost what you want see how the um, <coughs> the meat has become sort of uh, sticky right so by turning in one direction, you try and drive the myosin into chains of molecules which make it all stick. <clears throat> so myosin are the um, uh, protein molecules that are found in meat and responsible for um, contraction. And now I'm just going to add uh, two teaspoons of um, sesame oil to it before the final mix. All right, sesame oil added. One final mix. And she's ready. So I'm now going to put this into a bowl and stick it in the fridge. While I wait for my dough to um, rise.
So you can see that even though I put it through all that trauma, uh, the water chestnuts are still visible, the mushrooms are still there, the meat is still there, of course. Yeah. So we should be able to taste those individual components when we eat the thing. Well, it's been an hour. What's happened to my dough? It's not quite twice the size. Anyway, just going to test it to see if it's ready. And you can see that the whole remains there. So we normally consider that that is ready. But what I'm actually going to do is just um, fold it in itself, punch it down and let it rise for the second uh, fermentation. <clears throat> now you can see that the gluten network is there. And let's just see if we can form. It's not quite right because you can see that it doesn't actually form a network, a, uh, the window paint. Well, actually, it's looking like that it's almost there because the window paint test is passing. I don't know if you can see that. Nearly. Anyway, just going to punch it down and let it rise again. By letting it um, double ferment, we increase um, the activity of the yeast to let it to work as much as possible on the dough. <clears throat> Okay, come back another hour, I guess. We'll see how long it takes. The next uh, components of my filling are some Chinese sausage or um, lap chung. See so if you can read that. Chinese style pork sausages and a couple of hard boiled eggs. So let's get my eggs boiling for a start. <clears throat> so I'm using this. Um, I'm using this clay pot here because it actually um, I can use it for my steamer as well. I've only got these small bamboo steamers. Anyway, uh, I'm going to put two eggs in there. Oops, put that off the table here. All right, let's get my eggs. One egg. One egg in there. <clears throat> Another free range egg goes in there. And we're going to boil it for 10 minutes. Make sure they're really hard boiled. And let's get a couple of these um, sausages out. That one here can go back in the fridge. Going to steam my uh, sausages for about 5 minutes. <coughs> Uh, this is a um, silicon mat, so I don't have to cut up, cut up um, bits of paper. And it's going on top of my pot here. And it just fits, which is why I'm using this clay pot in the first place. So, Alexa, set a steam timer for five minutes. Five minutes, starting now. Alexa, set an egg timer for ten minutes. Egg timer, ten minutes, starting now. Okay, my timers are all set up. I can wait. My sausages are done. <coughs> Tasty. <coughs> now they cut them up. Now let's see now. Um, we're going to have uh, eight buns, so we could cut them up into eight pieces. But I find those pieces are too big, so I'm going to cut them up at 16. 
So there'll be two pieces of Chinese sausage in each pan. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Your egg timer is done. Seven. Okay. One, two, three, four. Your egg timer is done. Six, seven. That gives us eight. Eight pieces of sausage, sixteen pieces, that's good. Just what we wanted. <coughs> More filling. Eggs are done, but I'm going to wait for them to cool down because they're too hot to peel at the moment. And I'm going to check on what's happened to my dough. Oh, still pretty hot. Whoa, this is pretty hot eggs. So, what are we now? Just over, well, just over an hour actually. And I think you can see that the dough looks as if it's risen twice. Now, what I want to do is pull the dough out and uh, sprinkle it with. Uh, two teaspoons of um, baking powder to help it rise again. Now this is when we add the baking powder rather than before because baking powder has two periods of activation. The first time is when it hits water so if you add it initially then you'll lose that first rise. And The second time is when the baking powder hits um, I think it's 50 degrees Celsius or 60 degrees Celsius that's when it releases the secondary uh, amount of um, CO2. Anyway, let's pull this out, sprinkle some flour on the bench top first. <clears throat> Actually, I want to dry it off first. <clears throat> okay, put some, put some flour on it. And bring this. Actually, we're going to check it and see if it's ready. Still ready. I'm going to pull it out and do the dough test, the uh, window pane test. <clears throat> it's looking pretty good. Okay, nearly anyway. So I'm just going to get this dough out and um, sprinkle two teaspoons of um, baking powder on top of it. Now what you want to do actually is remove all the dough that's in the flour because we want to remove, sorry, we want to remove all the air that's in the flour because we don't really want air in this dough because when you steam the bowl if there's bubbles in it it'll be uneven cause dimples on the uh, on the bowl <coughs> so actually uh, you can see that there's air there we want to get rid of all that air All right, we want all those bubbles gone. Okay, so let's incorporate that baking powder we just put on it. <clears throat> and try and get rid of all that air.
we've been kneading the snow a bit. Um, still air there. A lot of air. But what we're going to do is we're going to um, divide this into eight portions. Um, well, let's let it rest for about 10 minutes first. Divide it into eight portions and then roll out the uh, bow skins. And when we roll up this bow skins, we're going to have another go at removing all this air. But first, make another ball, then let it sit for um, 10 minutes. Okay, let it sit for 10 minutes and come back divided into eight portions of dough balls. Alexa, set a dough timer for 10 minutes. Okay, so 10 minutes, and now we're going to divide this into 8. So we've made uh, eight dough balls of about uh, 95 grams each in size. Going to let them rest up a bit and uh, well, actually, we're going to roll them out into um, dough skins. But first I think I need to get my meat out of the fridge. Well, that's my filling all ready to go. So now I just need to roll out the um, bow skins. Alright, let's start rolling these out. Alright, let's leave the middle intact. And then they're going to be big pieces of skin. This is big bow pee. We only do four, okay? Only four. Okay. So we're not going to do the others. We're going to let them um, stay here. Because you don't want to do for proof, and we're going to start filling now. So I've got my valve skin here. First thing to do is put rub flour on the outside, so that the the pleats don't disappear. Okay. Now we're going to put the filling on this side here. <clears throat> Now we can push this in and give ourselves plenty of room. Okay, one egg and a couple of um, bits of Chinese sausage. Okay, so we want to just we want to use that part here to hold it. Okay, so that if we put our finger against there, thumb against the top of the finger then we won't get a much a, as long a pleat so we have to use up here so far 
Just keep plating this. Get this other stuff inside. Now, see it's pleated, it's tearing in here. So I don't really want to tear it. I just want to pull this in here a bit. Get it shaped a bit. And uh, looks like that. Well, the first one. And I've got to keep going. Okay. Let's have another go. Bow number two. Flower on the outside. Stop the pleats from disappearing. Turn it over. Now get some filling in. That's looking like probably too much. Push it in. Now some people will actually make it go like this. Round it up a wee bit. Anyway, two lap churn, an egg. Ooh, okay, all right. Another go. Pull. Pull and go down and pick up the next pleat. Just try and close that pleat off there at the top. It'll have to do. <clears throat> More flour, dusting. Probably helps this to be even more even. <coughs> Filling. <coughs> uh, just trying to get this all in. Egg. Okay, right in the middle if I can. And then get these pleats done. Thumb. Thumb. Keep twisting it anti or oh, clockwise actually. Keep pulling it across. Close it off. Pull those pleats together. And we don't want it too high because it's too high for our steamer. And last one. <coughs> I need more flour. I think I've got too much filling. Okay. Lap chill. Lap chill. Okay, done. Right, pull, 
Bowl twist. Turn, 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 turn. This one here has opened up a bit, so I'm just going to close it up there. Just going to close all those together. <clears throat> well, not pretty. <clears throat> so this is what I'm going to use for my steamer, my clay pot, and this is the hot water I use to boil the eggs in. And it's warm water now, so I'm just going to put this over about 15 minutes, let it proof again, let me just check to make sure that it's not overproofed. Doesn't seem to be overproofed. Anyway, there, leave it 15 minutes, and then I'll start the steaming. Alexa, set a proof timer for 15 minutes. Proof timer, 15 minutes, starting now. So I've let it proof for uh, 15 minutes, but I think it's not going to be long enough. And nothing's happened, because it hasn't really got any bigger. So, maybe because the water is not warm enough. So I'm just going to um, start um, the water now, and... Uh, wait until its steams comes up and then it time it from 20 minutes from there or maybe 30 minutes since it is um, meat on the fridge okay Alexa set a boiling timer for seven minutes boiling timer seven minutes actually it's uh, 20 minutes now and uh, I can see a bit of steam coming up I don't know if you can see that or not. So I'm going to start timing now. I think 25 minutes, I think. Because the last time I did this, it was slightly red, the meat. Um, probably because I'd kept it in the, in the fridge. Alexa, set a steam timer for 25 minutes. Steam timer, 25 minutes. Starting now. Has it risen at all at that time period? Oh, it's got bigger. <clears throat> Your steam timer is done. Alexa, cancel. So let's turn it off. And they normally say you have to wait a few minutes um, in case the bun collapses when you lift the lid off. So what happens is that cold air hits the warm air inside the bun and the warm air then shrinks and uh, collapses the bun but that usually only happens if you've got a very weak gluten network and I don't believe in this but anyway let's lift the lid up and see what it's like shoot wow so it's a lot bigger than before but I'm just going to pull these um, off the uh, off the pot and um, let them rest elsewhere. Well, give it a bit of a break so let's have a look. Wow! What? Yummy! So big. Okay, well, it is expanding. Oops. Hit that oh. one there. So big. <coughs> <gasps> <clears throat> so nice. I've still got the pleats intact. The top set the um, nice. bottom of the upper one. <clears throat> okay. What? I do have it's to do nice. a few more. Might have overproofed a little bit because you can see the little bubbles on the um, on the skin. 
It's not too bad though, it looks pretty smooth though. <clears throat> Just rolling out the second four now, and then we'll make up the last of the four bao. Da bao. Da bao zi. Bao zi. Okay, do some more. Hope it's wow, too much meat. Okay, let's see if we can form it. Wow, this is too big. Okay, where's my sausage? My two sausages in my egg. It's a little crack here. Okay. <clears throat> Then to the um, <coughs> here's my flower. <coughs> um, I've got some char siu that I'm going to use and put on this one here. So it's going to be char siu. I hope this works. <clears throat> Maybe it's just going to be too much. <laughs> I think it's ginormous. It's going to be one whole meal. <clears throat> My hand's not big enough. Just maybe a tiny cup of small sausages and a tiny egg. <clears throat> okay. to close it somehow. Pinch all these off. Yeah. So that one is with the chassis bow. <clears throat> it's a 
second one. <coughs> Dust it up and yeah, fill it. <clears throat> oh, look at that meat. Can't even pick it up. <clears throat> Want to get it centered. And then just try and a little cup. Push it in. And put our fillings on top. Final one, more flour. <coughs> okay, trying to form a cup. Hold all this content. And try and form. Not pretty. <clears throat> I think we're just going to put it over this, give it 10 minutes, and then we're going to start cooking. Okay. What's just finished uh, steaming for 25 minutes the second lot. I had the uh, dough in the uh, fridge so it wouldn't keep um, proofing while we were doing the others. And has it worked out? It looks pretty good. Uh, actually, I want to take more down. That's a lot. <coughs> yeah. uh, at the top. That's why we need deeper. Uh, need deeper ones. Oh, it looks pretty good. Still got the um, pleats, but that staining is because it's at the top of the, or well, the bottom of the other, um, the other bamboo steamer.
what's inside, see if it's cooked. Yep, it's going to get a knife and cut it open. <clears throat> Where's the tunnels? Okay. Okay, the meat's all cooked properly. Eggs all cooked, of course. Uh, water chestnuts. Yeah, I think what's happened to my um, chas uh, lap show. Anyway, so it's all fluffy. Here's a close up of a quarter. So here's the Chinese sausage there. Mushroom there. Egg, of course, and the pork mince there. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and um, have we go at making these um, da baozi. Thanks for watching, and if you like this sort of thing, um, please subscribe and like.